Welcome to the West Side Church in Rockford, Illinois. A legacy of praise, a beacon of hope, a vision of tomorrow. We hope that you enjoy this message. Good afternoon. Before we get started with today's message, I want to say a quick word of prayer. Lord, you're so good, you're so worthy to be praised. We just thank you for this opportunity in spite of what we're going through in our world, in spite of the fact that a lot of us are listening to this message that come from the comfort of our, our homes. Lord, we just ask that you and thank you for this opportunity for life, health, and strength. We just thank you for technology and how we're still able to move forward in understanding what you have for us today in spite of the fact that we may not be here physically. Lord, as I decrease, I ask that you increase within me, Lord Jesus. Uh, Give me a holy boldness that only you can give, not by thought nor by recollection, but by your spirit. Let the words flow through my mouth. I trust you, sir. And I ask that you touch the hearts and minds of the people who are hearing this on today. And Lord, I ask that you give them an encouraging word, the word that you have for us today. Let it be encouraging for us in the times that we are in. And I thank you in advance, and I give you praise and glory in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am so thankful to be here. This is uncharted territories for all of us. The mere fact that I'm here by myself with my lovely wife, lovely Leslie, is helping me with this. And I wanted you to know that it's just she and I here, and we did this on Saturday at 1245, so we're not breaking any ordinances or mandates that were given to us from the county, city, or the state. Uh, I want to first give honor to uh, our leader here at Westside Church, uh, my father, Superintendent Pastor Maurice West, and my mother, First Lady Sharon West, um, for their forward-thinking and Uh, visionary leadership, the mere fact that we're doing it this way instead of uh, coming together. um, It's not saying that we don't believe in that God is a healer. It's not saying that we're not uh, people of faith. It's saying that we are adhering and, uh, and listening to the words and the instructions that were given to us and we are practicing common sense because as a community leader, not just as a community leader, but I can say this as a faith leader, that the last thing we need to do as the body of Christ is to bring a reproach to God to, to, and to the ministry that he's given each and every one of us. In the event that a member of our, one of our churches contracts the virus or God forbid dies from the virus and it was found that the church did not adhere to instructions. We are all here doing, working through this together. Um, but there's one thing that we can do, and that's what we all be, we'll be talking about today. We're coming, I'm coming to you from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 through 8, and then we'll jump down to 18, verse 18 and verse 19. And I'm coming to you uh, with the New International Version. And it reads, David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and had and burned it and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit 
because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? And God said, pursue. And I took this out of the King, uh, the King James Version because it's powerful. Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Jumping down to verse 18, David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. May God have a, may have a blessing to the reading of his word. The subject that I want to give to you on today is failure is not an option. Once again, failure is not an option. I, I had the opportunity to preach this same scripture with the same title about seven years ago in 2013. And, you know, this is, like I said, this is uncharted territories. I've never done this before where I'm, I preach from uh, the church and put it on uh, Facebook and YouTube the way we are doing it. And so I wanted to ensure that, uh, especially in the times that we're living in with the coronavirus, that God, what do you have for your people today? Not this message from 2013, but here in March 2020. And some things stuck out to me from this scripture, different from what I preached a couple, uh, seven years ago on this same uh, subject. And that's what I want to share with you on today. There's two words that I want to focus on. Yes, we're going to be focusing on the mere fact that failure is not an option. But there's two wor other words that I want to focus on. React and respond. More importantly, uh, the contradiction that we have as being human. We, we're human and God expects us to elevate our thoughts and our minds and the way we operate to his level. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. And, but of course, that's a, that is, it could be a contradiction. It could be a battle because we're human. We focus on the here and now, what's right here in front of us. And God is saying, push past that and look at what I'm planning on doing and what I'm trying to do for you. We focus on our effort and God's value. But in this case, we're focusing on our reaction and God's response. The awesome thing about this, as I was uh, going further in this, is response and react is merely the same word. But there's a difference that I would like to share with you on that. Let's talk about our reaction. Reacting is acting in response to something. So however we plan to do it, you know how what I'm talking about. We are, we act, we our emotions come out of us and we say or do something based out of emotion because we're being reactive. Some of us, we can attest to this with, our, with people around us, even our kids. We, when we ask a question, what do we expect? An answer, right? But guess what responding means? It means to answer. Responding, God's response but is what we're talking about, but responding means to, to satisfy a need. I have a void in, uh, in my mind, so I ask the question for that void to be complete. I expect you to give me an answer to fill that void so I can have an understanding, right? Or uh, I have a need, I come to you with that need, and I'm hoping that you can satisfy with that need with an answer. But like we always know, like we've dealt with in, in our own lives, there's times when we come to people and with that need, with a question, and they react. And it doesn't give us the answer we're looking for. That reaction could be, oh, 
What kind of stupid question is that? First of all, I don't like the way you came at me. And now we're arguing, something crazy like that, you know? And that your void, your question, your that void inside is not complete because of the reaction that you received. Well, today I'm telling you that God wants to respond to you. He wants to give you that answer. And let's, let's dig deep into the scripture and then bring it back to our, our everyday lives. In the scripture, it's profound how David and his men came back home to where their whole family was uh, and came, came back to where their family was supposed to be and found out that their family and all their possessions was gone. And then verse 4 says something that in terms of their reaction. David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. Let, they cried to the point they couldn't cry any more tears. And a lot of us have been there where we've cried so long and cried so much that we are weak that it's ready to take a, take a nap. Just imagine David and his mighty men of valor. This is what they're called in the Bible. David and his mighty men of valor crying, weeping, not crying, weeping until they cannot weep anymore. See, in my head, when I think about that, it's scary because this is what I see. I'm thinking about David and his mighty men of valor. Let me give you another example. This is what I'm seeing when I think of David and his mighty men of valor. Are, do you, have you ever seen anyone looking like that, weeping until they could not weep anymore? I haven't. But see, that was their reaction. That was their reaction. All right. And then it, get worse. it got worse. Verse 6 said, David was greatly distressed, fretful, fearful, dist greatly distressed. Because his men talked about stoning him because they are harboring and they're just sitting in their reaction on how what just happened to him. And it caused them to think of doing things that are counterproductive, right? And so now David is greatly distressed. What would you do? I'll tell you, you know what? I'll tell you what I would do. Just humanly speaking, just Reese talking. I'm Reese, by the way. Nice to meet you. If, I, if, I, if that was me and I knew mighty men of valor looking like the picture I just showed you were trying to stone me, it's time for me to get out of town. It's time for me to get away from them, right? But this is the awesome part. This is what I need you to, to see. I need you to realize where failure resides, okay? Their reaction was to cry, to weep, and to get angry and want to stone David and for him to be fretful, right? But then we went down to the next verse where it says in verse 6, later down in the verse 6, but David found strength in the Lord his God, right? That part, remember that part. David found strength in the Lord his God. And then we go back down to the verse and it says, The Lord told him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. That was God's response, God's answer. Our re their reaction, God's response. But here's the thing I need you to see. Right here, right there in the middle, is where failure, the potential for failure, resides right there between our reaction and God's response. Yes, the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I get that, but let's be real. There's times when we get scared, right? There's times when we get worried. There's times when we react. But I need you, my friends, to get away from this area to where failure could happen and get yourself to this place where you get the response from God. What does that look like? Let's bring this to our day and age where, where, that we are, are, have right now. I'm thankful. And I'm, uh, like if I look bet with me and mine and the here and now, to my knowledge, everyone is healthy. No one's showing symptoms of COVID-19. My Even in my job as state representative, I'm trying to be very mindful of where I go because the last thing I want to do is bring something home to my wife. 
And so right now, everyone's smiling and doing what they need to do. And I'm thankful for that. But there's still some worries, not just with me, but with people around us. How many of us? And, I'm, I'm just, and that's what worries me. That's what I'm thinking about. Let's start from the young and up to the top. There are seniors, high school seniors, who are already, ex and, less, and college seniors, who are already experiencing senioritis, already have a countdown on their phone on when graduation is, and now they have no idea when they will graduate because no one's going to school. We have restaurant and, uh, and bar employees. We just have employees, period, who had to stop working. Some of us out here, we're able to take some time off and still get paid, but there are a lot of people who aren't able to get paid and are worried about what's gonna come with, when it comes to their livelihood. And they're fearful. They're depressed. They're worried. I'm concerned about the business owner who just got the momentum to get their business off the ground. People are starting to see who they are and getting the, and, and the, the struggle, the bumpy roads of getting their business together is hopefully behind us then, COVID-19. And now we're told to go home and stay home. What does that mean for the momentum I have in my business? What does that mean for my business as a whole? What does that mean for my paycheck? What does that mean if I'm part of the essential workers who still have to work? God, what about my health? I'm worried about that. Remember what I said, failure is not an option. You see, those are validated reactions. I get it. <laughs> no one will knock you for it. I get it. God gets it. That's your reaction, right? But God is saying right now that you cannot fail. I don't want you to fail. I need you to get to that point where you get your mind together to find out what my response is, says the Lord. Find out what my answer is for your own individual lives. Find out what my answer is for your community. This is the time right now, right here, right now, while we're at home chilling. Nothing wrong with watching Netflix because I'm about to do it when I get home after this. Got some, me and Leslie got some good shows that we're about to watch. But there's times where we got to hit the pause button, get on our knees and pray for our city, pray for our county, pray for our state, pray for our country, pray for this world. We are the go-between. We are the ones to get on our knees and say, Lord, help us. Lord, touch my leaders. Lord, from the local, state, to the, count, to the federal level, touch them and give them the wisdom to do what's necessary so that we could save more lives. Yes. We need to get on our knees and pray for this community because failure is not an option. And at the same time, that's when we're putting ourselves in a place just like David did. He said, David, but David found strength in the Lord his God. And when that happened, when David found the strength from the Lord his God, not saying you're gonna do it by yourself. God is gonna give you that strength. Once David found the strength from the Lord his God, in the Lord his God, he was able to then put himself in a position where, let me pray. Let me find out what God is saying. Everything is chaotic around us. Everything is messed up around me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to calm down. I'm going to pray. Lord, you, you saw my reaction. You know how I feel. But Lord, now give me a response. That's where you need to be. This is the time right now, my friends. For us to get on in our on our knee on our knees and pray, even if it's not on our knees, while you're walking around the house, Lord Jesus, help us. Give us the response that we need. Give help us to understand what we need to do. Once you do that, that's when you get the the peace that surpasses all understanding, the joy that is unspeakable. As we're adhering to the instructions that are given to us. We're praying for those around us and saying, Lord, touch their individual lives. But here's the awesome part that I want to share with you. I want to read it again. Verse 18 and 19. David recovered everything. 
the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. What am I saying to you? Yes, failure, you can't, you got to pull yourself up because you can't fail. God is calling you, your, the community is needing you to pray. We're here to pray and seek God's face for what's going on right now, right? Right here in the middle. This is where we need to make sure we're focused to get to where God's response is. But God is also saying, once you get that answer, failure is not an option. Once I respond to you, I will give you what you need to do to bounce back. And guess what? Failure is not an answer that I will ever give you, says the Lord. I, yeah, you are not working right now. Yeah, you're stuck at home. Your kids are at home too. You're worried about how they're going to you know, get their, their lessons. You're worried about what's to come in terms of graduating. My job. Seek my face, says the Lord. And, I, and when I give you my response, failure won't be an answer I'll give you. What does that mean? In the scripture, David brought everything back. God is saying that if you seek my face, seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33, and all his righteousness, and all these things, then all these things will be given unto you. Calm yourself. Nothing wrong with the reaction. Get, wait, don't let, but don't stew in your reaction. Don't just sit there. Because imagine if once the mighty men of valor wept until they could not weep anymore. Imagine if they just stayed there. Would they have gotten their family back? Will David have gotten that? If David just stayed there and, got, and stayed distressed, would he have gotten the answer he needed to get everything back for him and his men? Most likely not. And that right there is failure. And failure is not an option. And so what I'm telling you is don't stay in your reaction. Start seeking God for his response. So that when and that response you get will never be failure. That response you get will help you to get yourself out of the rut that you're in. The response that God will give you will help you to look back on the times you're living in and see and be and see how you grew, how what, what changed in your life. While we're in this rut, while we're in this stage, we have to pray for each other. That's where we can't fail. We have to pray for each other, pray for the people who are not within the four walls of our church, pray for the people who don't believe in God and don't believe in faith, pray for, your, for people who are hating on you and always talking about you. We have to, have to, we have to begin to pray because failure is not an option with that. And when we get to that point where we're praying and seeking God's face, his response will not be failure either. We're living in unprecedented times, times of uncharted territories. But this is where God thrives. As long as we let him thrive within us, as long as we stop focusing on our fears and start focusing on God and getting instruction from him and thanking God for the fact right now, thanking him that whatever the answer he gives us, failure won't be one of them. Lord, I just thank you for my friends and my family. I thank you for this word that you've given us, God. I ask that you help us to remember what you said, that failure is not an option. Lord, I, Reese, do not, I don't know, I don't know what you want to do for each individual life. I don't know what the future holds. But one thing I'm confident in is that failure is not one of them. A major setback to the point where we lose everything is not one of them. As long as we focus on you, we get in your face and get your response to this situation that we are in individually, collectively. Lord, I ask that you touch our leaders, our, not just our faith leaders, Lord, but touch our mayor and our chairman of the counties here in the state, touch our governor, touch our president, God, 
as they lead us through these tumultuous, these unprecedented times, God. And Lord, as they're doing this, we ask that you help us to understand for ourselves and for our families what we must do beyond the instructions we were given by our leaders, what we must do to make sure that we could bounce back from this. And once again, God, I thank you that failure is not an option. You be blessed. You be safe. I pray that you and your family are well. And until we meet again, remember, failure is not an option. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's message. For more information, please visit westsidekojic.com. Thank you and have a blessed day.